So you guys ask Toby a bunch of questions on Instagram and he's going to answer them for you now. I can't even explain what it's like to be this awesome. You just, you just got to be me. What's your favourite lyric that you've written? Ooh, I think my favourite lyric, aside, I'm not going to drop something from any of our new songs because obviously that would be... Uh, that'd be mad, but I think from what we've written so far, it'd be crown shyness, it'd be autumn comes to cut me down to size, it becomes beautiful to die, which is like talking about how, you know, when trees are dying and the life is leaving trees and we see like death and the colours associated with it and we're like, oh wow, that's beautiful, but it's like objective death, but we see it as something that's like this thing to, to marvel at. And I thought of that lyric while I was cooking an egg. <laughs> I remember, I was like trying it and I was like, Cosmic. Oh, bro, it just hit me and I was like, whoa, that's mad. I think your best lyric is, um, when I picked you up, I didn't know how hard it would be to put you down. Oh, that gets me. Talking about his dog. Bro, bro. RIP, the, the bad year, 2018. Yeah, the, the, the dogs had a real rough yep. time. Yep. Oh, my, yeah. My dog, your dog, and Oakley's dog, all in one year. That was rough. But yeah, that's a good lyric. That's a great lyric. You got a lot of good lyrics, so give me that one. This one's going to trigger you a little bit. How was your guys' Warped Tour experience? I know for a lot of bands it was their first and last time. Yeah, it was our first and last time. Warped Tour was sick. Like, I, I think even the terrible, horrible, difficult bits were all part of the, of the experience. Like, if it had just kind of gone seamlessly and we'd have only had like good journeys and just got along with people, I think there'd just be less cool stories to tell. Like the, that that break, the only thing that I regret about all of that breaking down and all that madness is Why that don't you explain the breaking down for people who on? Oh man, um, where, where, where did it even begin? Nevada. Yeah, it was our first bus. We wake up uh, like in the middle of the night and we hear like a bang and um, I woke up in my bunk and I was like, oh, there, there goes a tyre. I kind of just thought it was just going to be just a tyre. I was like, go back to sleep. But then Dewey, our bus driver, just like runs in. He's like, everybody get the fuck out. Screaming. Everybody get the fuck out. And I was in my pants and I grabbed the money from under the... <laughs> the money from under the mattress and my phone and just, was just like, right, I've got two hands full, just like darted outside, <laughs> ran into the desert barefoot. That's some breaking bad shit, isn't it? it out, was... out into the desert with a hands full of cash in, in your pants. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like cash and phone. Because <laughs> that was the priority. And I, I really thought, when, when Dewey came back and was like, we're on fire, like everyone get out, I thought explosion was imminent. I, I, th I thought we'd like, the gas tank was going to go, something was going to be crazy. But no, it was just like the wheel well was on fire. Um, we stayed in that van for like how long? I can't remember until the, the replacement one. Uh, probably about over 24 hours. Yeah, it was like a full day and a bit. But then we ended up, no, because it was a bit longer than that because we got rescued, taken back to Nevada, yeah. then got picked up by a second bus, oh my which God. was equally fucked. Well, um, we did, what they didn't tell us about the second bus was that the reason why it took so long to get there was because it kept breaking down on the way to us. But obviously they didn't want to tell us that. So they were just like, yeah, no, you'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. And me and Dewey, Shout out to Dewey. We sat up all night outside some casino in Nevada after we got dropped off there, there by like the rest tour rescue guys. I can't remember the exact name, but shout out to those guys as well because they came and picked us up. And then we got into the second van, uh, van, I keep saying van, bus, um, which obviously broke down within an hour. Well, it of, got, it, no, it got us, us to the next desert. It got us to Utah. The, yeah. Yeah, it got us into Utah and then broke down again. And then we were there for ages as well like even longer and there was promise of a third bus which which we decided not to wait for we waited for a bit and then we were just like you know what dead off this whole bus company um so we rented cars didn't we we got a taxi to where were we? i don't know we got a taxi to somewhere that we could rent i think it was like an 800 dollars taxi or something ridiculous yeah like that. insane and then we rented cars and drove to the rest of the shows we did end up getting on another bus that was like the third bus from that company. Eventually it was in Kansas, I think, like a few days later. 
No, we didn't rent car. No, we were, we got the taxi to the hotel yeah. and then got on the third bus with the, the fourth bus because the third bus never the came. The third bus never came. The fourth bus with the Trump supporting driver yeah. who threatened to kill us. Yeah, it's like a joke. He was just like, <laughs> "Oh, y'all don't support Trump. Just remember, that I'm in control of your lives." It's just like, "Oh my god, <laughs> great joke to make, isn't it?" Like t- thirty seconds into meeting someone, he was the worst shit as well because he was kind of friendly, but he was that friendly where he'd just like come and sit in the room while you were talking to like involve himself and he just immediately shattered any chance of us being mates with the Trump comment before we'd even got on the bus <laughs> and then we're just kind of when we were having a conversation he'd just come and sit and just be there taking up like four seats and all the bad energy in the room and then that bus was garbage the shower leaked the toilet leaked it had a banging sound system <laughs> <laughs> the sound system was fire yeah, was <laughs> but like everything else about the bus was garbage and then I can't remember the specific reason why we ended up ditching it, but yeah, no, they pulled over somewhere in Florida and were just like, right, you need to pay us all of the money that you owe us for the next like week of driving we're going to do up front. Yeah, they, they essentially preempted us not wanting to pay them for the massive, like, an almost 80 hour ordeal that we went through in the desert, yep. um, which was fair enough, you know, we, did, we didn't want to pay them. But we, we were gonna pay them though. Yeah. I, there were no whispers of us not paying them. We were fully prepared to just eat it and pay them and whatever. But then when they were like, pay us or we're not driving you, we were like, fuck you, we'll just hire cars. Um, so they, they screwed, and then we didn't pay them. So they screwed themselves out of that. And then, yeah, Jesus, that, that was it. We ended up doing the rest of Warped Tour in cars. Yeah, big ordeal. Big but ordeal. I, I like that, that that turned into like, Folklore almost, didn't it? Like there were whispers going around walks. I thought, like, oh, I heard they didn't. Oh, I heard you guys were stuck in the desert for like eight days. <laughs> it just, it just got more and more ridiculous, like Chinese whispers. But it was, it was quite a horrible time, definitely. It, it was cool. You're right. People started to recognise us as. Oh God! When we got the bus and we got the trailer, like we rocked up to one of the shows and like the side door on the trailer is <laughs> come off. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and, like, everything kept our, happening. Our merch was like stacked up against this this hole, and we were like, there could just be a box of merch on the freeway. <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> that just kept going wrong. Like it, it did get funny quite quickly because it's like there's there's something messing with us here properly. Someone said, "Do you remember? Do you remember meeting someone saying I don't like your band, but I had fun anyway? That must have been in Europe. Fucking yeah, like <laughs> quite a few times in Europe. That's like a classic European, not to single them out, but like particularly German thing, where they'll just come up and they'll just be like, oh yeah, yeah, your 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 first album was was shit, but uh, this album not so shit." <laughs> And, and some good I songs. preferred it when you were less fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit like that. And you're like, oh, same man. But they'll, they'll be like really stoked. They'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, cool. And you're like, I like that honesty though. It's kind yeah. of nice. It's refreshing, and everyone is very, um, very polite in England, aren't they? So, but it's, it's yeah. Tell it like it is, bro. If, yeah. if you if your intentions are good, but you want to come up and say that you don't like some of the songs, go for it. Honest discussion is the best discussion. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Are there any songs from your old EPs you want to go back and remaster? Narmalade is just a lot of fun, just because it's heavy and I like it, but like re- remaster, and the remaster's not enough, like remaster's not gonna do anything to it, is it? Like a, re- a remix and a, and a rewrite, and kind of, well not a rewrite, but just like a fluff up, probably Narmalade. Yeah, yeah, not a Taylor. Yeah, but what's remastering gonna do to take? <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, we'll go in and we'll, we'll turn it down or up a wee bit and I'll fix it. Yeah, right? probably. Taylor is a fucking car crash, there's no, no way. Favourite moment from a show? I think the obvious ones are the obvious ones, like when we sold out Islington Academy or when we played Reading Main Stage or Download when it absolutely popped off. All of these ones are like the big obvious ones that are obviously sick. The less obvious one that I think is actually one of the best moments was when we did that Rome release tour for their EP, was it like Viewpoint? Maybe, Maybe those yeah. three days. We did the first day in Brighton and like the room was full but no one, I've never seen a, a room full of more like stone faced people just waiting for Rome. <laughs> waiting for Rome. And we were like, okay, it's cool, it's like one of our first tours, whatever. And then Liverpool was the next show. And that show was like the first time show, wasn't it? It was first proper. Where, pe- where like a decent handful of people knew the words and were kicking off. And there was maybe like 10, 15 people in the crowd 
that knew all the lyrics to like our first EPs. And after having no one respond at the Brighton show, I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's what these shows are going to be like. It'll be all right, but you know, whatever. And then boom, we get to Liverpool and it goes crazy. And I was like, that's a nice one to look back on as well. Yeah. I re remember actually as well going into the dressing room and there was like six beers there and we were like, oh, three, like, one, four, beers, three beers. It was, it was like, it was mad. So it's quite nice to look back at that and think like, wow. Especially to put into perspective some of the things we moan about now. Which... I, I remember all of a sudden getting, like all I've ever wanted was to stand on stage with songs that I've written and watch people get sweaty and kick off and go crazy and walk on, walk on each other's heads and that. And then they did and I was like, oh, look at that, we did it, yes! And it, it felt like the beginning. It was the like, first proper taste. got the taste, yeah, officially. How did you get so good at singing and stuff? How did I get so good at singing? Yeah. See, and stuff. And stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put the and stuff to the side. But I, you know what? I, I'll, be, I'll be like dead honest. I don't think, and I know everyone thinks this about their singing voice, I don't think I have like a virtuoso nice singing voice. I've always like been able to sing because my mum's side of my family is very musical. My mum's a singer and like from a young age, I was always able to sing along to things and it sounded good. I don't think I have like the nicest voice ever, like that Adele, Michael Bublé, Charlie Puth, kind of like, it's just pleasant to listen to. But what I feel I do have is a whole goddamn bucket load of energy and as it turns out, quite a powerful diaphragm. So I was able to just overcompensate by pouring more than is necessary energy into my performance which over time ended up kind of molding itself into something that did sound quite pleasant to listen to. So I think once I get into it, and once I'm properly warmed up and I'm, I'm going, I think I have like quite a cool sounding, powerful, consistent voice. But in general, I don't, I don't really like my singing voice. No, I, th I think, it, yeah, I think you've got to be a bit of a narcissist to really love your sound of your own voice, haven't you? <gasps> but Bu Buble must love his voice. Yeah, to be fair, there, are, there I mean? are certain singers where you like think... Like Freddie Mercury. Mercury. Yeah. You must have just been like, right, I am so fucking good at this. Yeah, John Mayer. Yeah, just absolutely crushing it. And I, I, that's, that's not me like shitting on myself. I think I have like a strong, powerful, good voice that I enjoy performing. But um, yeah, I, I've never thought like, oh my God, I'm next. Whatever. I just like getting on stage, getting sweaty and getting violent. It's worth saying as well that it's been a work in progress thing. Like if you go back and listen to Toby's voice on the EPs or some like early live shows, it's changed quite dramatically in that six year period, seven years, how long is it? It's been a long time now, man. We've been getting, yeah, been getting, a, bit, getting a bit old. I think it is six years now, isn't it? But, um, That's mad. But yeah. no, it's improved dramatically. A hundred percent. And this is something that I tell all of my students as well. Um, is that like there was a whole like that first newfound glory tour first the only newfound glory tour that we did the first US tour. Um, you guys actually we did do two newfound glory tours. We did the UK one as well. Oh, yeah, we did only three guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our first US tour. Um, that tour was when I really wanted. I was like, I want to learn how to shout properly because if you listen to nothing I write you, then it's me trying to do shouty, powerful vocals, trying to emulate all the artists that I like, but not really understanding how, um, and it. If I listen back to nothing I write you, it kind of translates. And um, yeah, you can hear that I'm trying to do something that I don't really understand how to do. But then that newfound glory tour, I was like, I'm gonna figure this out. And halfway through that tour, you guys like pulled me aside and you were like, we're playing in front of new potential fans every night and you just sound like shit, man. I don't know what you're trying to do. Retrospectively, actually, yeah, there was there was resistance from us. We were like, Toby, this sucks. Like, what's going on? It did on? suck. At, but he stuck with it and um, and it worked out right, didn't it? You knew best in this instance. It, it, it was just that I felt like I was kind of nearly there and it was getting a little bit better with every show. And then once I started to get it like a little bit, you couldn't tell me anything. I was like, I, 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 I'm feeling progression and I have to see this through. And then I did. Thank God he did. That's the end of part one of this video. We're going to do a second part because Toby loves a long answer. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe, follow, like, leave a comment, and uh, we're going to try and get some more of these done in the future. For now, if you'd like to continue to support us, please do head over to our merch store or go and stream He's So Good on Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever streaming platform it is that you use.